And now, Minion Works presents Freelance Heroism. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And we just want to say thank you to all of our badass, fucking awesome, brick-fisted patrons. <laughs> Patreons. Pa- patrons. Patronus. You guys are rad. And uh, thank you guys so much for donating and making it so that we can put out a better product for everyone. For everyone out there. <sighs> <laughs> I hope that picks up the way I wanted it to. It sounds I mean, like a crowd and not just like me breathing in a microphone. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, it has a different implication if I'm like, thank you to all our patrons. <gasps> <gasps> it's not It's not the same. Just creepy, heavy breathing. I want to say thank you to all our patrons out there. <laughs> I want to say uh, thank you for the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use it to pay off my bail. <laughs> but yeah, so Rachel, do you want to tell us who our awesome patrons are, so that we can bow to them in humble reverence? Absolutely. Uh, this week, we want to give a special thank you to Chris Deeds, Chris Sones, Orient underscore Tiger, Ario Tbagan, Rebecca, Mo Neek Walker. I said that weird. Mo Walker. Mo Neek. No, I like that better. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Mo Meek. And Breakmeister, a.k.a. Breaker, uh, a.k.a. dude I used to play Pathfinder with. Uh, we're going to have uh, your ex-Pathfinder buddy and my ex-Pathfinder buddy fight it out. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then the, the winner of that match gets to pick of the remaining patrons to <laughs> battle against the two-headed giant, Chris Deeds and Chris Sones. <laughs> They didn't know they were signing up for a cage match, but that's what they were signing up for. Uh, it's, in the... <laughs> it's in the fine print. Right. <laughs> the blind print, because I didn't type it. <laughs> so, I just sent you that super awesome picture of that murder car, right? You did, yes. How cool is that thing looking? It's really cool. Okay, so for those of you who want to maybe like, I don't, I don't want to say pause it. You should listen to it on uh, on Spotify or some client that'll play in the background but you should definitely when you get a second uh google the lamborghini lambo v12 or vision v12 and just marvel at the absolute decadence of this (laughs) fucking batmobile analog like this shit looks like a mech Mm -hmm. it doesn't look like a car yeah, I was telling you earlier, it, I like, I first thought, when I just saw the thumbnail, I thought it was from, like, a video game. It is. <laughs> We're living in a simulation for sure if that car gets, like, manufactured for everyone. Mm-hmm. There's no way. Like, Lamborghini does, I, I was talking about it earlier, Lamborghini does this thing all the time where they make these cars and then they, like, put them out there for, like, their um, design conference or whatever. People come and they watch it slowly rotate on a car lazy susan Uh with like (laughs) lasers and pink halogen lights and shit like that and smoke Mm -hmm. and 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 that's it that's all that's all the car's for and then (laughs) after that it's gone forever and they never make a single version of it there's like the one floor model and then it's gone right so like do you know how how rich you'd have to be to own the one version (laughs) of the turbo car but then, like, I mean, what if happens I, if your what happens if your oil filter breaks? <laughs> what are you gonna do? You're gonna go buy a new fucking space engine part? I would be scared to drive it, but like someone would like ding it or something. That car looks so gnarly. The, that V12 looks so gnarly. And then when you press the accelerator, you don't move. The universe moves around you. <laughs> it's so gnarly looking. Mm-hmm. For those who haven't seen it, um. Just let me describe it uh, like using words. Uh, it it looked like if the Batmobile did a bunch of cocaine. <laughs> right? It's just so fucking gnarly looking. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. If you there's no there's no survival. They're they're like airbags. <laughs> like 
there's no air back in that vehicle let me tell you because <laughs> it, it's so sharp that if you hit something you're gonna go through it and probably not even scratch yourself it's like fucking a hot knife through butter they're, they're dead whoever you hit is dead uh-huh. um or maybe not even dead maybe they're just like get kind of slid off the roof or whatever <laughs> it's so <laughs> slick looking but i just i just i was looking at it and i was thinking holy god their design team is literally just a bunch of dudes being like what if we put six spoilers on the sides I'm like what do you mean on the sides I'm like on the sides of the tires <laughs> it's like <laughs> what <laughs> what <laughs> oh man it's so fucking weird but it, it is very aggressive looking and their design team is really great but i just wish that any of these would make it past you know watch it rotate on a mm-hmm. youtube video <laughs> i don't know so what you want to talk about rachel i ordered a switch the other night so i'm really Woo! That. yeah have you decided on a game not yet what game are you thinking i don't know i definitely want to get pokemon yeah and octopath traveler and i really that's a great one I want to play Decay of Logos, but the reviews are not great. Because it's, it's like a Switch indie game. It looks so bad, Rachel. I, <laughs> I saw it, you were talking about it the other day, and I went through uh-huh. the eShop last night, and I was like, that looks like shit. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to, like, blast this game that you were into. but No, it's fine. I mean, I don't even have my Switch yet, and you're already judging my game choices. <laughs> If that's your game choice, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> that was like the opposite of that fucking Lamborghini. <laughs> it was the it was the opposite of the Vision V12. That shit looked like Vision V nothing. <laughs> I don't know if it was because it was like featuring an elf girl main character, and that's why you were into it for like the Adri parody. I like no, I like the you have like an elk. Your elk helps you, and it says that you explore dungeons. And there's some sort of like story where your elf village gets killed and you're like the only elf survivor and you have to get rid of How novel. <laughs> How novel. They killed everyone you ever know. Yeah. And you have and to you get and revenge your, with your elf. You and your battle elk. That's have right. To I think it sounds fun. I'm just saying in Torchlight, which is on sale now, mm-hmm. Torchlight 2, you can have an elk as your assistant. And there's a lot more gameplay. And it <laughs> How do you cool. know there's more gameplay if you haven't played Because that game cost $19 brand new. <laughs> and it looks like it was assembled. Look, I, I'm i not shitting on this mini what? studio. I don't want them. I I'm saying you, you work with what you're given, right? You have 10 artists working for nine months. Not everything's a slam dunk. This one looks rough. <laughs> I'm not saying the studio is bad. I'm not saying the artists are bad. I'm not saying anyone that worked on the game is bad. Sometimes things just happen. Uh-huh. I've done, you, you've got messages from me in the morning yes. where I'm like, I've been working on this comic for 17 hours and it looks like shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'll cancel a comic last minute and draw something new mm-hmm. like five hours before I have to post it because holy God. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. And uh, that's what they should have done. They should have made George Light <laughs> too. I actually, I have a mini that has been sitting on my desk for the last month and a half because I had this idea for how I was going to paint it. And then I started and I hate it. (laughs) And so then I just like set it on my desk and I just, every day I look at it and I'm like, oh. Set it and forget it. (laughs) I mean, it happens. That's, it happens. Sometimes your brain's telling you one thing Mm -hmm. and you try to make it happen and it doesn't yeah yeah it's a thing it's not weird or anything i think i'm gonna scrub this mini and just completely restart it scrub it like like jettison it from the (laughs) airlock or like scrub it as in like actually take the paint off i'm gonna take the paint off that's less dramatic because i don't i don't like it i don't know what i was thinking i hate it i'm just just holding it? it yeah He's blue with like green. That's uh, not that bad. Green. No. Those I are like flat it. colors. I hate it. That. He's got like, I don't know. 
He's got like Rachel, this, Rachel this, likes like, bold colors. She doesn't like this lime kind of sea foamy kind of tones that she chose. Oh, I hate it. You should just paint it anyway. See, because sometimes another thing that can happen is sometimes something looks like shit and then you color it and it looks great. You never know. I'll we'll have to get through my mini commissions, which I somehow got. That's amazing. Congratulations on your first few commissions. I wasn't even trying. That's how it works. And like people started asking me over like Facebook and stuff. They're like, you're, well, I have this. You're a freelance here. hero. <laughs> you're freelancing now. Just feels feels weird. Yeah. I mean it does it. And and it always feel it'll always feel weird for like the first if like if you do this all the time, for like mm-hmm. the first year it'll feel really weird. Mm-hmm. Then after that it's the invoice thing, like to negotiate with someone and tell them prices and kind of feel out where they were. That at the beginning, when I first started, it was so awkward. I always underbilled myself. I always undercharged. Um, the hour hourly wage was like real bad, <laughs> like no. like worse than kids making Nikes. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> but now I have a pretty good idea of roughly how long it'll take and. Mm-hmm what kind of work so now it's like and everything's so streamlined like my invoices are so clean and my system's so good that mm-hmm. i tell them what like talk it out quote them a price they yes or no me mm-hmm. and then i'm like okay well like if they say no because sometimes people will be like try to lowball you i'm like <laughs> trying to negotiate i'm like okay well just contact me if you uh if you do want to work <laughs> within within a day every time uh-huh. so i don't know well, that's, I mean, that's good that you've gotten yep. better about it. Well, just prepare. If you decide to do a few more of these, it's going to be awkward for the first little bit. <laughs> anyway. That got less funny. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> that being said, mm-hmm. if you'd like to commission some work from freelance heroism artists, these Cassius, just go to one d 4 com or message these Cassius anywhere your local these Cassius is are sold. Seriously, I don't think I've said no to a gig since Bubba's thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I don't want to spoil his <laughs> his IP, but uh-huh. I referred the shit out of that one <laughs> to my buddy. <laughs> anyway, that's, I think that's the only time I actually said no to something. Uh huh. Maybe one or two other times, but that one in particular stands out. It's like the one where I was like, nah. It's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah I, I was thinking like he was like I'll put your name on, on the book and I'm like no thanks <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my name on that <laughs> can you imagine that being your only credit for like a, it's like I always think about this with those people that do like the free credit report dot com song uh-huh. or like the cars for kids song or whatever right. like somebody's only musical credit <laughs> they don't have an album uh-huh. you know what I mean they just have a jingle like a, like a song for herpes medication right <laughs> they're like I was the herp patrol jingle and they're like oh god that's your oh. that's your wikipedia entry <laughs> yeah they did the herpes song like oh good I can't imagine that like, <laughs> even if it's something that's not as bad as that if it's something that's just like normal like let's like freecreditreport.com is one of my favorites because those are what is it that college thing you call them up and they tell you about a college that'll rip you off I don't know it doesn't matter uh, but they had these, these guys that sang a song mm-hmm. and they did like five or six commercials but it was the same song written different ways kind of performed in different I don't know uh, arrangements I guess uh-huh. <laughs> that seems like a big <laughs> word for this um but so like they'd sing it and then that was like on wikipedia like that's what the only thing they had done (laughs) right and i was Uh just thinking like man that's got to be weird because that no matter how like indie popular they get Uh that's always going to be them yeah right like imagine if the beatles (laughs) were on like I don't know, like a ketchup commercial. <laughs> That's all they did was sing about ketchup for like two or three years. And then they went on to be the Beatles. 
I don't think that's ever happened. Has that ever happened? Who's that guy who was in Dumb and Dumber? Not Jim Carrey, but the other guy? Oh, uh, fucking the guy from Newsroom. Yeah. He, I saw some, like, video a long time ago about, like, actors early. Actors are race. different, though. You just oh, want your okay. face out because you're pretending to be someone else. But I don't think it's the same for jingles and music. Okay. Well, he, like, his first acting credit, some Jeff. kind of... Shit, what's his name? Jeff? Bridges? No. No, that's someone else. No. Uh... Um, but he was, his first acting credit was, like, some kind of, like, over-the-counter medicine, uh to help you poop. <laughs> he was very enthusiastic in the commercial about how well it worked. It was oh really funny. God. Oh, God, what is Jeff? I'm going to look it up. Okay. I'm going to be crazy if I don't. <laughs> uh, Jeff Daniels. Oh, okay. He's a great actor. He does a lot of work with Aaron Sorkin now. Like, he did a play uh, to kill a mockingbird. Oh, cool. Like, they did a, a stage version of it. Mm -hmm. His... Like, but see, that's what I mean, though, is that for an actor, it's not the same. Like, uh -huh. because, I mean, does it matter if fucking Brad Pitt used to sell, like, raisins? <laughs> like, <laughs> does it matter? Does anyone care? Still Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. By the way, Brad Pitt, uh, generally, I consider a pretty good actor. Uh -huh. I think he does this thing. Um, if you ever pay attention to him, he eats in most of the movies he's in. Right? Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll like snack on something and it's like one of those few things that you can do that is different for every person right so like like if I gave you a snack and me a snack same snack uh -huh. um, in isolation we didn't see each other and you ate the snack and I ate it we eat it differently right. our personal characteristics would come out through the way that we ate a snack mm -hmm. right and so he does that in all these roles nobody talks about it but in every movie, he's snacking on something. And I think that it's really interesting because it adds like a layer to the character that is not dialogue. It's uh -huh. purely acting, like uh, physical acting. Yeah. Watch any movie with him in it and he's eating something. <laughs> it was in fucking Seven Years in Tibet. It was in fucking Moneyball. It was in everything he's ever been in. By the way, Seven Years in Tibet, he's terrible in that movie. Love him in most things. And there's not that particular one. His accent is horseshit. I haven't seen it. It's, it's, I, Brad Pitt is not listening to this podcast. <laughs> but let's just let's just assume that one of his nephews uh -huh. is listening to this. He's got a lot of kids. One of them's bound to listen to a podcast at some point. <laughs> what are they like? Forty-two of them. <laughs> One of them is bound to listen to something. It might get back. I don't think it will, but let's just say it does. Okay. Brad Pitt, I love you. I think you're great. I think you're great in a lot of things. I really like Rusty from Ocean's movies. Oh, very good. I love those movies because stealing is one of my favorite things. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest with you, man. That accent from Seven Years in Tibet was just... Oh, oh my God. What the fuck are you thinking, dude? Okay. Anyway, sorry. Well, before you have any more personalized messages to Brad Pitt, uh, why don't we go to today's episode? Duck season? Mm -hmm. question with a question mark? mark? Yeah, with ah, a question mark. Okay, cool. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> Stop talking to Brad Pitt. Yeah, on the first Ducky Dash ever, she goes sliding into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> they can only run towards water. That's how ducks work. Oh, okay. All right. Uh... Bread bomb. Unlimited breadsticks. <laughs> get this bread, guys. <laughs> Let's get this cheddar. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess that's my turn then. I love you guys. Neither of you have attacked yet in combat, which actually still allows him to activate assassinate on both of you. Great. Looking forward to it. As a ranger rogue, this is going to be an amazing battle. Oh, no. I cannot wait. <laughs> yeah, I want to see him roll higher than a three, David. <laughs> I like to use his cunning action to disengage and turn around and then fire. Uh, you mean that he rolled a three, though, right? 
on his attack? Um, it's not his turn yet. He was actually first with a 27. Hey, he used that to come out of the building, correct? Hmm? He used that to come out of the building since we are, our initiative started in the surprise around the building falling. Then he had to get up and react to the building. That was his action, right? Yes. So then back on the top of the initiative, it goes him again, right? Yeah, he'll be first in line. Okay. I'm just let me know when he's going to roll something and I'll let you know what he gets. <laughs> That's fun. I love this ability. It's like with DM his and multiple DM. attack, with fantastic. Multiple. That's fine. You can you can three one of his attacks. That's fine. I'll just uh, I'll I don't know. I know. I'll make it. I'll, I'll roll a three on his finger dexterity. He'll drop. All right, two. we'll keep going. <laughs> <coughs> Esmeralda moves next. Says so she can't see Chinakote. Hmm. And your orders to her was to wait, right? Yeah. Until someone doubled up on Chunakote. All right. Because she's an unknown entity. You know what I mean? They don't know that mm -hmm. she's with us. I should have cast Death Word on myself. Oh, should have, no. could have, would have. Oh, no. Yeah. All righty. Okay, next is Malice. And Malice disappears from her location and she reappears on the building, on Hunter's building, overlooking the collapsed building and then down sees both of you surrounding the Hunter. Rad. And then our mysterious number four. That's called a mega poop. So you take a, a number four. I gotta drop a wicked number four. All right. He's not making his entrance yet. All right. From the tree line to the west, you see a rider riding a town in plate on a phantom steed. Shield on his back, long sword on his hip, gleaming armor. He pulls his um, steed of reins just north of Ludo's house where he's at. And he looks up at Ludo. He's like, you remember your orders? Ludo nods and pulls up his mask. And the rider turns the steed. Draws his sword. The sword's glowing with a black flame on it as it emerges from the hilt. Emerges from the sheath. Ooh, pretty. That's how you make black and tilapia. Use a black fire. Well, yeah, huh? Mm hmm. All right. And top of the round. Um, our hunter disengages as a bonus action and moves up 15 feet, turns around, draws a second pistol, fires at both of you. One shot at each. What a dummy. Focus fire. Okay. That is a 29 on the first one at Kavir. Mm -hmm. And me that a is a 26 at Adrian. Give me a three at me. All right. That's fine. The first shot, Kavir, you've s seen in your dreams. It came to you. <laughs> you were able to slightly move around it as the bullet shot and emptied the, exit the barrel. You slightly twisted it. Dude, that's cool looking, right? Mm -hmm. Deflecting it with uh, like the shadow blade, like whoosh, off to the side. Mm -hmm. Professional. I dodge bullets, baby. <laughs> I just need to check one quick thing. And the one that Adri just hits her, she's just like, ow! Uh, and Adri, it has advantage, so it is sneak attack because you haven't taken... Actually, no, no it doesn't. You have taken a turn in combat, but you haven't actually combat it so never mind the assassinate does not work all right okay. so it's just a normal hit okay so that is the pistols pistolia that is a 10 10 damage okay it gives you a wink 
puts both on. Pretty sure the the wink is like makes Adrian more uncomfortable than being shot. She's like, I would rather you shoot me than do that again. <laughs> that maybe he'll waste his whole next term winking. <laughs> He gets another three on that wink, and he can't reopen that eye. <laughs> Looks like mouse, love. Give you a hand here. And Chunakote. Right, I'm assuming I heard the gunfire. Oh, yeah, you heard the gunfire from the north part of town. All right. Can I get there? No. Damn it. All right. I can still see the stupid spider, though, right? Kill the spider! Yeah, it, the spider has gone farther north, but you can still see the spider. All right, well, we're going to take out the spider. What's its armor class? I got to do a, well, I'm going to do a scorching ray on it, three rays, using a level four slot. All right, roll. All right. Nice. I got an 18, a 23, and a 24. All three hit. Woo! Burn, spider, burn. All right. So that is... 12... Player's handbook, not a monster. Jesus Christ. Only 15 points. My damage rolls are shit tonight, apparently. All right, 15 to the spider. But that's okay. I probably got its attention. Oh, you got his attention. Which is good. He turns around. <laughs> but in doing so, you also have gained Ludo's attention. That's all right. Dad Pyre wants to bite the dust he's going to. Sorry, Adri. Don't kill my dad. I'm if I have to uh, if it's do him or me. Kill, do not kill my dad. If it's gonna be him or me, no one can kill her dad. She, he'll turn into smoke. Kill him. Know, if it's gonna be down to him or me, I'm not holding back. I'm sorry. Better not. not like I want to. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you, Jake. Kill the shit out of that dude. <laughs> Stab him in the heart with a porterhouse. Hey. <laughs> I'm not wasting a fucking porterhouse on him. That's the only stakes we have. Well, I ain't wasting on low stakes. Fuck, man. I'll go find a tree. That's true. Right. I, I, I would rather whittle for an hour before <laughs> combat. Uh, Kavir, it's your turn. Yeah, before wasting a stake like that, I would. All right. Kavir, um, it's your turn. Where is Rachel located? Um, She's within five feet of you. And we're 15 uh, feet off of Homeboy? Mm-hmm. So we could move to him and get an attack in. I'm going to hold off my turn until Rachel goes because my sneak attack damage is higher. So I'll get um, fucking what's it called? Sneak attack. Yes, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to postpone my turn until right after Adri makes her turn. All right. It'd be funny to watch two rogues constantly try to go after each other. <laughs> Adri, you're up. Slowly <laughs> descending the fucking the initiative list. Uh, going. Bonus action, spiritual weapon. Woo! That uh, means no sneak attack. No. But then when I move up to hit him, I'll get advantage. If I do my spiritual weapon first. I don't think a 14 hits him though, does it? Nope. Okay. And then I will move up and swing my longsword at him. I get advantage, so I get to roll 3d20. No, oh, let me before you do that. Let me check something quick. Okay. Oh, you're getting advantage because of the sword. Okay. Not because of surprise or. No, because my spiritual weapon grants me advantage. All right. Yeah, I purposely put the alert feed on him to stop surprise attacks. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, roll your attack. Twenty-five to hit. Yes. Okay. Is he a fey fiend or undead? I said no last time. Okay. Well, Though I haven't, think we haven't a seen fiend. him in a few days. Like, who knows what he's been doing? All right. Uh, you, you act like I stack everything undead here. Go on, people. Okay. So I get um, a D8 for my sword plus a D8 radiant normally. Okay. 
plus a d6 sneak attack plus an additional 2d8 because of my holy weapon. So this plus 5. 17 damage total. Okay. That's not bad. All right. Yeah, your sword glows bright as you strike deep. Okay. He's able to slightly move, so it's not a lethal blow, but yeah, you strike deep, you draw blood. Okay. Second blood goes to you. And he winks at you again. That's the stop! Best <laughs> I need you to stop that. That's... I don't know why you would do that. We're fighting right now. Why are you... Because my master said it would make you uncomfortable. It... It does. <laughs> and anything to piss off Ludo. Don't. don't. <laughs> He's going to look back and be like, you see what I did, Daddy? <laughs> all he does is mope and write songs all fucking day. Hey, first of all, language. Second of all, he's he's a bard, all right? He's an artist. That's what he does. <laughs> and you know what? My mom loved him for that, and you are just jealous that he's so talented. And I hope that my talking has distracted you long enough for Kavir to come up and stab you in the back and do a ton of oh, damage. Would have would have been cooler if you're not pointing out exactly what I'm about to do. Oh. <laughs> like we're gonna Kavir? we're gonna talk about your banter. <laughs> In Kimberly particular, the part where you give away exactly what's about to happen. You're just giving him free port and roll. I'm going to say that part like <laughs> after you move up and like as you're stabbing him. Okay, so I get advantage, right? Because of positioning? Yes. I'm going to attack 27. Right. That clears the issue? Oh, you did. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, I have advantage. Okay, cool. I, thought was, I don't know why I thought disadvantage for a second. I'm just n <laughs> normally expecting bad things to happen when I'm involved in combat. Oh, that's fun. Uh, 40 damage. Wow. All right. Those cut deeper. How deep would you say? Uh, you definitely left a trail of blood down his back. Hmm. I'm going to weaken cut him. <laughs> Malice anytime, honey. <laughs> and Prick is gonna dive bomb the lady on the. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Esmeralda, she's still. She hasn't seen Chunakoti in her combi yet to get over Swamp yet, so she's still holding. And um, if she's prepping a spell, if anyone attacks Chunakote, she's gonna. If they're in range of her spell, she's gonna strike. Malice points a finger at Adri. Uh oh. Um, roll disadvantage. Give me a, a uh, give me a wisdom save with disadvantage. A wisdom save, really? Okay. With disadvantage. Okay. That's three spell points. What's your first roll? Let me know what the first roll is. Uh, my first roll was a fourteen. My second roll is. Less is it total 14? No. Sorry, the die was 14. The second roll, you're going to get a 17. A natural roll. Oh, okay. That is a lot better than the three that I rolled. Uh, so 27 total. All right. That's fine. The piece of save, you feel your body begin to shift, and you feel you're almost beginning to go, and you kind of quack for a second, <gasps> but you revert back. Wait, what? Was that polymorph? Side. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. That's amazing. Yeah, he talked about that before. Luckily I had a dream about it. Oh, uh, she did she did be coughing up feathers for a week. <laughs> I just in the middle of battle she goes Quack! and then like, oh my god, I don't know what happened to me. I'm like, oh my god, she's reverting. <laughs> <laughs> she's a wear duck. Poor thing you do is look up. That's it, bitch? Really? <laughs> <laughs> she winks at him that's our whole communication all of our thieve can't is just <laughs> no she just she showed, he showed like kind of looks at the mage on the, on the roof that's it bitch <laughs> oh, made, her, made her quack yeah. these, these, these <laughs> two of them are like rip me six ways and that's all you can do 
<laughs> we got a side effect now. Next time, next time she sneezes, it's gonna be. <laughs> Just breadcrumbs everywhere. Where's my fucking spider? <laughs> oh God! I found that a lot funnier than I should have. I think. All right. I'm so happy that this is going. Well. I did. Yeah. Oh, these fuckers are dead. I'm gonna go into my full out fucking barbarian rage. There's still another person we haven't seen, so let's not. Yeah, they're get dead too. Fuck yeah, that guy with the long sword. He's but dead focus too. Firing, focus firing this guy was the right answer. I think. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um, get ready for me to grease your butt and drag you up the roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just saying this though, as a DM, I find it an honor, and I find it happy. Uh, like it gives me happy joy feeling that I had an NPC that you hated so much you planted a fucking full brutal attack on him first out of the four of the team. Notice that everyone oh, yeah. on the team, right? Out of everyone on the team, it was like, you kill his pet and we'll kill him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the only person I was worried about. I mean, I know the Storm Lady's strong and everything, but mm-hmm. she's a caster. I'm pretty certain we can clip her, but I don't want that dude doing anything with that gun. Yeah. No. Problem is you've taken out his distance and you've taken out his stealth. The two things that make him fucking. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The thing that makes him brutal. I got one hole in her armor though, so I'm happy. <laughs> Just so we know, we started this battle by me flipping a bird way high up in the sky. So <laughs> that's like a symbolism for everyone on the ground. Yeah, dude. Shooting off a shaft, bro. Straight up. <laughs> flipping a bird off the shaft. That's not the episode title. I'm going to need a different episode. Yes! Title. Talking about shit. <laughs> you know what? Flipping the bird. There you go. There's your episode title. Flipping the that bird. should be the episode of, of that bard company. We should call it Just Talk About Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Just Talk About Shaft. Who is the man who works Shaft. in the mine? <laughs> Shaft. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Right. Who's whose turn is it? It's the Black Rider. Okay, great. Is can we see him? Can I see him work from where I'm at? No. Okay. Alrighty. Here we go. In front of Chunakote, your eyes, you see the spider, something shake, and two spiders now are standing there. Okay. This is what we call a target-rich environment. All right. And top of the round, Hunter. He disengages again. <laughs> God damn it. Moves another 15 feet. Pistols in. Two more out. You guys are no fun. I'm going to wear your face Actually, and mask for Halloween. Fuck this. He doesn't pull the two pistols out. He pulls a bullet out. Flips up in the air and casts his um, Conjure Barrage. And you guys see a 60-foot cone of bullets shoot at you. What? I need deck saves from both of you. Okay. Oh, no. I used all my cool shit. <laughs> uh, that's not great. Mm. Oh, that's not great. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. <laughs> oh, that didn't make it. Twelve. That didn't make it. Oh, we sound like Sesame Street. Today's episode you brought to the by, by the numbers 10 and 12 and the letters F U. <laughs> Let okay, me flip was, this big bird. My bad. I was rolling a D10 instead of a D8. Oh, God, David. <laughs> uh, I noticed it when I rolled a 9. I'm like, wait a minute. The 9's not on a D8 here. We got a problem. That's, well, that's how it is according to one or two of my players. Um, you guys both take 16 <laughs> damage from the bolts. Six. Okay. Sorry, 16? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to fly away at you now. Yeah. The cool part about, the cool part about that what? spell it says you flip up. You know, it's a piece of ammunition. So it could be bullets. It could be arrows. It could be bolts. It could be. I was like, fuck yeah. So I grabbed the spell. That is pretty cool. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's how you do magic, bitch. That's how you do magic. Ah, oh, fuck, they're still here. He runs Crap. another 15 feet. <laughs> oh, he, he disengaged, right? Yeah. 
So he's 30 away? Yeah. <laughs> he's just shaking his head like, this bitch is going to get me killed. Wait until after Adri's turn again. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. And Adri, well, you're up. <laughs> the spirit weapon moves with him? Or Actually, you... no, I'm sorry. No, you're not up. No. Um, spirit, the weapon moves with Adri's turn. Okay. Yeah. This is my turn? No. Oh. Like I said, that. I it, no. I thought I went I'm after sorry. the hunter. No, Ludo does. Oh, Just last okay. turn, Ludo casted a spell. And I had a 20 initiative, so I should be before your 18. Yes. Chunakoto will go for it before that. In front of you, Jake, you see Ludo drop down. He casts a second spell on him. So he casts a spell the other round. He does another spell on himself. Draws both blades. And kind of stands between you and the two spiders. Is he facing me or the spiders? He's facing you and looking dead at you. All right. I'm going to drop the greater invisibility, switch over to Hunter's Mark, and pull out my bow. And I'm going to say, don't make me do this. I said, you're Adri's father. I don't want to hurt you. There's a lot of things neither of us want to do. Well, be your own man. Did somebody say bees? <laughs> yes. This turn's done. It is your turn, Shunakote. All right. Well, um, I'm going to fire my bow at one arrow at each of the spiders because I'm not considering him a threat until he attacks me. I promised Adri that much, but so help me God, if he does, it's on. And that would be... Whoops! So do you have to pick which spider your hunter's marking? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Um, the one on the left. Alright. And I've got a 27 and a 23 to hit. Okay, you With the hit. 27 going to the left. All right, you hit both spiders. All right, and it physically hits them both. It does actually does does damage. Like I could see something happening to them. Um, one spider, yes. The other one disappears. All right, which one disappeared? The one on the right. Beautiful. So I get my hunter's mark. <laughs> All right. Oh, I didn't use my sharpshooter feet. That's okay though. Yes! Good damage roll! It's a good thing you didn't use your sharpshooter's feet. You may not have hit. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. All right. I, but I got rolled good on my damage. I got 21 points total. Fuck, yes. Maximum damage with that bastard. Finally! 21? Finally! And the spider's still up. That's all right. That's all right. All right. But it is missing a leg or two. <laughs> You're a mere insect now, no longer an arachnid. Ha 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 ha! Taking your yet? spider powers away. Anyone dead? Nope. Nope. All right. Spider gonna be. And we are out to the top of the map again with Adrian Kavir. Kavir is passing his turn for Adrian to go first. Adrian, you're up. Okay. Uh, bonus action. I will move my spiritual weapon over to the guy uh, for it to attack him. That is a twenty-one to hit. 21? Mm-hmm. That hits. Okay. I believe it's a D8, but let me double check. Yeah. Okay. For minimum damage of six. Solid. That's right. uh, force damage. And then I will move up and attack him with my sword, and I get advantage. All right. 25 to hit. That hits. Okay. I love this fucker. 26 damage. Ouch. Okay, that carries. All right, cool. Ooh, you guys already got him halfway. Yes. Halfway. And that's 89 damage. <laughs> I don't even know what that feels like. That's so amazing to me. <laughs> Oh, just wait. That's my bonus. Is my move. Okay. 
All right, that is my turn. All right, Kavir. I'm going to move up to him so that I have advantage. And I'm going to... You could just see him desperately look up at her like <laughs> anything. I'm going to hit him, advantage. All right. Uh, hopefully not that one. Does a 20 hit? Yes. Okay, good. Thank God for advantage. 42 damage. Whoa. This is honestly not the best damage. It gets way higher. 42 is pretty good, I guess. But... All right. What's this total? Of? Okay. Ooh, this damage close. is the All answer right. to everything. I really hope that lady only had one polymorph prepared. Either that or you might have to pass a check on your own. <laughs> I know, I know. It's asking a lot. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. It's Esmeralda's turn. She She's doing uh the first combat, Shunakote. Well, she's yes. uh, staying es in the woods. Uh, Esmeralda yeah. also knows that Ludo is Adri's dad. That. No one cares Influence. about this but you. I promise. I care, I care so much. I you care know he doesn't die. Hey, Jake, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, Esmeralda whispers to you. You still have this? Okay, she's going to hold action. <laughs> Chunakote just gave a thumbs up to nothing. Like, no one's talking to him. He's like, yeah, I got it. And then, <laughs> like, okay. All right. What? He's not wrapped that tight. All right. The storm mage looks at both of you. She points a finger at both of you and whispers twin spell. You see two green dots off both of her fingers shoot at both of you. I need deck saves. I need a deck save. <laughs> and, um, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you guys. Um, last time, I did not use any of her actual meta magic. Yeah. I'm using them this turn. 16. Oh, I wait, need... no. Uh, 19, David. I 19. need new dice. Uh, I got a 13. Okay, Kavir, you passed the deck save, but Rachel Ooh. did not pass the disintegrate save. What? What? Am I dead? I have to roll out for disintegrate. I have to roll out um, 10d6 uh, plus 40 force damage. Why didn't I cast death ward on myself? Because and... you were casting poison stuff. Oh, yes. Poison. <laughs> okay. Oh, dude, don't make me do a real Death of the Duck comic. <laughs> that would be a bummer. I would actually be sad drawing those. I would have felt bad if I would have took you both down with that. She twin spelled it. Okay. That took six fucking of her spell points to cast that a second time. Thank God you only had Adri. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, that's 4d6. That's another four. Okay, there's 10. All right. Oh, no. Hear this? Yeah, that sounds like a, a lot of things, David. That's a beautiful sound. As a dungeon master, I love that sound. That's the rattlesnake of destiny. You know, I'm I not actually, crazy about it as a player right I now. Cast, I cast Disintegrate on my party that I DM for twice, and both times people had to use two hero points to not get disintegrated. Like, <laughs> in like two rounds, I ate four of their hero points. It was amazing. Oh, Ooh. Okay, Can 10, I use a hero 20, point 30. to keep her from dying? Or inspiration? Eight. Um, that is 78 damage. I'm still alive. That's all that forehead. It's got all the con in there. <laughs> she got a beefy forehead. It hit her forehead. It only disintegrated half of it. Yeah, the, the rest of her body has 16 hit points. Her head is at 2,000 and counting. It has its own con score. It's called the four con. Oh, you guys said don't hold punches anymore. Yeah. No, this is great. I'm glad that your head can eat all that damage. You know she's saying that now, but come Barty Company, dude, she's so fucking coming after me. <laughs> this uh -huh. is great. Damage, well, yeah. damage, damage. <laughs> yep. Does a 32 hit you? <laughs> <laughs> you know it does. Hey, give your, how would that have done against you? What? How would 78 done against you? It would have killed me. Oh, my God. Yeah, it would have been bad. Oh, that hurts so much. I still think that my my choice of not of using the seventeen to stop her from ducking. 
Oh, no, no. Yeah. The smartest. Yes, yeah, because... Yeah, that was really good. Oh, Disintegrate dude. definitely kills a duck. You know? Luckily, though, once it drops to zero, she reverts back to Adri. After the Disintegrate. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> but Ducks don't have hero points. <laughs> you have a... I gave you a Revivify scroll. Yeah, but don't you have to be at least partially together? Oh, yeah. Just, yeah, disintegrate would have come Am I casting it on the dirt? It would have been gone. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, let me look at my healing spells. And, uh, okay, that was her turn. And you can just, you guys hear a deep, deep laugh from deeper in. You two hear from deeper in. Should have coached you here from north behind Ludo. And Ludo just, he kind of seems unsettled now. Top of the round is the hunter. That's my bitch, he says, and disappears back. <laughs> another disengage for another 15 feet. Wow. If he keeps doing this, he'll be out of range at some point. My first spells. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he actually went back into town with this move. The roof, the roof that she's standing on, it's a peaked roof, correct? Quasi, yeah. I figure you're near a lake, so there's a lot of water. Generally, mm-hmm. they have peaked roofs. That'd probably be a disadvantage on a grease check, correct? Yes. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'm still stabbing homeboy until he is fucking dead on the ground, dead. <laughs> Um, Homer pulls out his musket this time. Oh, no. Lifts up the musket. You see on the end of the musket a bright, shiny, brand new bayonet. <laughs> okay. He's not going to use it because the bayonet, because he backed up. No. Does a 22 hit you, Kavir? <laughs> David. David. <laughs> I know. We're just going to keep playing that game, huh? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Give me some damage, bro. I can see him, right? Oh, yeah. Um, That is a 24. Okay, I take 12. Um, I wasn't looking at Chick when she cast. No. Oh, wait. I still have evasion, though, right? It didn't deal damage to me anyway, right? Which one? The disintegrate. The disintegrate is actually target spell. It's not a area of effect. You wouldn't have been able to envision out. No, oh, but it didn't hit me though. No. Okay, good. Actually, no, you would have been able to vision out. Yeah. Because it is a deck space. My bad. I, I was thinking fireball or some shit, but uh, I no. can I can I can do it out of fireball too. Mm-hmm. Anything that's an area of effect that deals damage. But if um that d- requires um, a dex to have with, dis- with disintegrate, it either it hits or doesn't. It, there right. isn't a part to um, evade. So it's like a range touch. Yeah, it, it either hits you or you completely miss the shot. Okay. It doesn't like do, deal half damage for a miss. It just it's there or it's not. Right. Udo's up. He closes the distance between you thirty feet. There's ten feet between the two of you now, Chinakote. And he's well, as he's doing it, you almost see a dance to the way he's moving. The way he flourishes his swords, the way he's moving around, mm-hmm. the way he's moving it. Is he singing or talking? Um, he is singing. This is 5e. There's no snowflake war dance, right? Mm-mm. Okay, good. There is, um, there is the school of sword, and there is, and there's a number of things mm-hmm. called blade flourishes. Not the same yep. thing. Fucking no. two handed weapon fighting. Or two weapon fighting, fucking uh, snowflake war dance with oratory or singing it is filthy. That's that old three five bard murder sprint mm-hmm. or whatever from enemy to enemy. And it is Chinakote's turn. All right, I'm gonna take two more shots at the spider. <sighs> That's not as good. 16 and 17. Both miss. I kind of had a feeling. 
The spider hops over one and then ducks under the other. Ooh. Clever girl. I forgot to move the goddamn spider during the hunter's turn. <laughs> I keep forgetting the spider because it's not with him. Okay, Saludo, Kuchunakote, Kavir. Hold soft to Adri. Adri? Okay, um, my sword is no longer glowing because I can't maintain concentration on holy weapon after taking that much damage. All right. Um, Don't need to move up on him. Even if you heal, you have to move up on him. Well, uh, I will bonus action spiritual weapon to him. I got a nat 20 on my spiritual weapon. All right. So he takes 17 force damage. Yeah. You broke his widow head. You broke his widow head. Uh, as my action, I will... Do I want a death ward or do I want to heal? I'm going to death ward myself. Ooh. How many hit points do you have? Uh, I have 28. But if I death ward, then if something hits me for that would get me to zero, instead I go to one. Whereas if I heal myself, if I still take more damage than I have. Okay, that's true. So I will death ward myself. And then move up to him. Okay. Don't forget to wink at him. Ew, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> All right. Come here. Uh, gonna hit him. Move up to him and then hit him. Uh, 26. 26 hit. Yes. Okay. This is probably gonna do it. 40 damage. That did it. Nice. You got over him by 12. Hell yeah. Eat my butt, Ranger. Um, your swords, yeah, right. I mean, the way they flow, the way they move. When I when I attack with like a sneak attack, I'm crossing both blades, mm -hmm. so that they leave the shadow trail and the light trail crossing. Yeah, you left them marked for death. Cubed. Esmeralda's. Villa Lobos. Yeah, she's looking at. Obscure. You know, between Ludo and Chunakote, um, keeping her spell prepped. It's one of my favorite lines in any movie. It was like uh, in Pulp Fiction when, uh, what's his name, the boxer's leaving the fight. <laughs> and she goes, he goes, uh, your name's Esmeralda Vidalobos. She's like, and your name? He goes, Butch. She's like, that's that's a great name. What's it mean? He's like, we're American, honey. Our names don't mean shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Jake, you hear a click of a pistol behind you as, as Imrelda begins to ready hers. Okay. All right. To the top. We have undead redemption. <laughs> I need intelligence saves from both both of you. From me? Both of you, yeah. You feel the whole area around you guys just... Your minds begin to feel dumb. And your bodies <laughs> begin to lose themselves via your mind. Dude, you know, this is bad. Intelligence saves. I am not... <laughs> Let me get a new D20 out. Because these three I have out currently have done nothing but betray me the entire night. Smash them! David, I'm the smartest person arguably on the planet. I'm yeah. Holding. I got a nine total. All right. D20. Oh, holy I know, hell. Okay. I know I only use you for when I play Meg, but I need you. I need you not to screw me over. You really did. Yeah, you do. I got a 19. That's a total of a 20. You also need to take half damage. <laughs> okay. It's eight, um, you guys got hit with a synatic static. It's a 20-foot sphere, 8d6, half on a passing. Ooh. One minute after, you roll a 1d6, and from all your attack rolls, your saves, your things for the full minute, you take that penalty. On if everything. I fail, I still take half. Yes. Okay. It's intelligence. It, it's not a, it's not a, like a, um, it's a mental attack, a psychic damage. Uh, then I can't evade it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And it was a 17 DC you needed to pass. What was the damage? 
Um, I'm rolling the 8d6 now. Oh, oh fantastic. I might be dead. <laughs> Thank God I cast death <laughs> Yeah, Rachel's going down to one. Hey, Chunakote, how's it feel to know nothing about this going on on the entire other side of the map? Hey, I, I can't do anything. I don't know. As a player, it sucks, but a character, you got no clue. I like rolling the dice near the mic, just so everyone can hear it. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's 23. 23? 23. Fucking A. Mm-hmm. So Rachel takes half of 23. Oh, sweet. And just 12, I think. No. 11? 11. Rachel takes 11. I don't have to use Death Ward. And oh. Kavir takes 23, but Kavir for the next minute. You roll a 1d6 in your next turn, and your attacks, your saves, um, your checks, anything you do takes that 1d6 penalty to it. Okay, so I roll that at the beginning of every turn? Yeah, let me pull up the... That's uh, harsh. Dude, you're, you're telling me. Damn. Do I, just, do I roll it now? Um, you can roll it now if you want. I'll read it to you directly out of the book. Let me... Oh, um, shit. It's in Xanathar's. Six. Oh, jeez. Of course. Jeez. Of course. That's when I roll max rolls. Of course. Negative's always max on my shit. This dice roller is an asshole. I think it listens to you and decides. I think it does. They mm -hmm. have a guy sitting behind the app desk, and he just hears everything that you're saying through your phone. Mm-hmm. And he's like, ooh, this seems important. <laughs> We're going to fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, after a failed save, the target though. has a muddled thoughts for one minute. During that time, it rolls a d6 and subtracts uh, that um, the number rolled from all its attacks and ability checks as well as constitution saving throws to maintain a con um, concentration. The target can, emit, um, can make an intelligence saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on its success. Do I have minus the six from my save? Um, it says ability checks. And yeah, it would be well for everything. This is yep. con saving throws, though. It's a Specifically, yeah. as a concept. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, concentration checks. So basically, any mental thing you're doing, anything that's going to require mental acuity, you're going to get a penalty to. So, okay. I would say that the minus six would apply to the intelligence. I mean, if you know, if you're going to go strictly by interpretations, I mean. And how long does it last? Be a fair by uh, one minute. Okay, ten rounds. Fantastic. Hey, look, I'm playing Idris' character sheet now. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, he's still smarter than Ragnik. <laughs> well, that helps. Oh, I couldn't use the spell. On, I couldn't use the spell on Ragnik. He had to have a two intel or a three intelligence or higher. It doesn't work. <laughs> it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he he just sort of stupid, dumbed his way right through it. All right. Isn't that how it always works? Okay, mark that spell down once. Once. I have two. I have two. I, oh yeah, I have two fifth level spell slots. I can cast it again. Okay, great. I love this chick, dude. I, I've fallen in love with this storm sorcerer. Just the class, just the whole class behind it, and I haven't even tapped into my storm spells. That allow me to go up ten feet to avoid the attack of opportunities. I hope she's agile. Very. So, after her, it is the fourth. The fourth man of the apocalypse. He takes off north riding and comes around the back of the house. And this is when you guys see the Phantom Steed and the black armor, Adrian Kavir. Okay. He comes, he's about 40 feet off the two of you looking at you. You see him sit, sitting on the horse in all black plate, sitting there. Phantom Steed, black sword, black fire on it. He's, I'm really like, it's a Phantom. It's on my brain. <laughs> <laughs> All he does is just laugh stupidly. He, not stupid, but he laughs in a deep voice. Like, <laughs> I think that's my favorite Kavir ever. Fentor. <laughs> does he have a... Can we see his face? No, the visor is completely visor. down. Okay. He has no face. <laughs> he just laughs. He looks at Mouse. Good job. Damn shame we lost Pothian. I'm going to need a new hunter. And that'll end that turn. Back to the top. My internal monologue knows that I'm 
that my intellect is low, so I'm trying to remain silent. <laughs> Follow my own instruction. If you're stupid, don't talk. Ludo moves up on Chunakote. As he does, Esmeralda's shot fires. Misses. He moves up. With three attacks, I believe. No, just two. Okay. First one comes out of 21. And the second one comes out of 24. They will both hit. All right. Nice knowing your dad, Adrian. Nice knowing you if you kill my dad. Hey, he's asking for it. He attacked me. First one to come through at a 12 damage. All right. Wait, I'm sorry. That was with the Zephyr strike. That adds an extra D8. 15. And then the second one comes through with another 10. So 25 total. And the swords are magical. Okay, excellent. He's still singing an elvish song under his breath as he's moving his swords around. And we are to your turn. What are the words of the song? You don't know elvish. Oh, I do now. How, My favorite, I got an extra favorite enemy, and I took two races of humanoids. I took Elves of Vashanti. Nice. As the song goes, it's a battle cry, an Elven battle cry. It speaks of days of old, reaching them. Mm. Battles won, battles lost. Okay. You sing songs of honor, they'd act without it. I'm going to disengage, and I'm going to take two more shots at that stupid spider. Okay. That's a little better. 24 and 27 on the spider. Hit and hit. All right. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Let's see if we can get this goddamn thing out of the way. Oh, 31 points total. And the spider goes down. <laughs> Stupid fucking bug. <laughs> Not so spectacular now, are ya? <laughs> you almost you see Ludo smile through his mask at the, at the spider dying. Do you have levels in Rogue? Me? Yeah. No. Isn't it an action to disengage? Otherwise? Oh, that is true. It's because it it's normally an action oh, okay. to disengage unless you have cunning action. Then okay, you then I'd only get one shot. Actually, yeah. no, you wouldn't you get one get shot. Any shot. You wouldn't well, you get any shots. No, because no. it's your action. No, well, then, no, God no. damn it, let Ludo hit me then. I want that spider dead. All right. Yeah, just keep it. Keep Fuck it. it. Fuck it. He wants to be an asshole. Fuck him. Yeah, disengage is going to get you 15 feet anyway. If he wants it, he'll probably still hit you. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm trying, I'm trying to learn the, the rule. Oh, no, no. That's but, fine. Yeah, if I, still... That is absolutely fine, dear. You're not offending me any. Okay. A 19? Uh, yes, that will hit. All right. Um, That would be a six damage. All right. He has no honor. He's not deserved. He's not worthy of, of my concern anymore. All righty. And check, check. That would be Kavir. Check on the roof. Is she uh, levitating? No, she hasn't cast a storm spell. Okay. Then I'm going to cast Grease on the roof under her feet. Disadvantage on spell save DC. Uh, deck save 16. When she moves? If she uh, starts her turn in the square. Or if she okay. tries to exit. Alrighty. Um. Anything else? Uh. Yeah. I just want to also point out that there's um, there's friction, or no friction on the roof, so she wouldn't be able to use a check to grab. She'd get a, a disadvantage on her ability to grab the ledge or anything. Um. I'm also gonna use the cantrip mage hand to prep some ball bearings, <laughs> just in case. All right. Actually, no. You know what? I'm going to use the mage hand to prep my pipe. 
Yeah. Already. And I'm going to float it up towards her direction on the edge of the building. And then I'll end my turn. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Adri. Uh, how badly injured does Kavir look? Mm. You've seen him worse. Are you, do you have less than half your total hit points? I'm always at less than half my hit points. Has someone hit me? Yes. Then yes, I'm less than half my hit points. Okay. Do you have... Can I do a medicine check to figure out how much? Just so I know how to divide up my preserve life amount. It's bad. Uh, I'm, pr- I'm pretty bad too right now. <laughs> I, look, I look like two-thirds of my body is weak and bloody. And... I have 17 hit points. You're worse than me. Once again, we want to thank you guys for listening to Freelance Heroism. We hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing. Visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like. If you want to see our adventures in comic form, the professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com. If you want to support us, consider donating. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Keep an eye out for rewards as we add them. Our theme music is Investigation by Devil Music, used under the Creative Commons license. You can find a link in the show notes. Our cast includes me, Dees Cassius, as Master Kivir the Professional, Rachel Moore as Adri the Ducky Cleric, Jake Sipple as Chunicote the Lupine Loose Cannon, and last but not least, our DM and Dr. Midnight, David Walker. Questions or comments? Send an email to freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, the invoice is in the mail. that when he his cameo in deadpool 2 like he just he he told them that his fee would be for them to buy him a cup of coffee or something that's i mean he's just having fun at this point he's so yeah. rich it doesn't matter that's true yeah. yeah i just i don't know there's something cool about that at being so good mm-hmm. like so like removed from the concept of <laughs> commerce that you can now just kind of have a good time mm-hmm. but it doesn't excuse seven years in tibet's accent <laughs> <laughs> Under no circumstances was that accent okay. And I think that I've been pretty charitable about how I feel about Brad Pitt here. I've uh-huh. been pretty cool about it. You have. Yeah. <laughs> but just that movie. Holy God. <laughs>